Well, here we are, and we're very fortunate this morning to be speaking with uh, Anthony Gray, the uh, son of uh, Earl Gray and Mary Godwin, the founders of Toronto's first and Canada's first uh, continuous Shakespearean festival, the Earl Gray Shakespearean Festival. And um, uh, as uh, we were discussing earlier, Tony, I wanted to begin by uh, milking you a little bit of your reminiscences of the theatrical scene in Toronto in the uh, post-war period. What were things like around that time? Well, first of all, I'm going to speak of uh, Toronto and maybe Toronto is a proxy for Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a cultural desert. Uh, of course, the country had just been through a, a pretty difficult period with, with the war. Um, it was um, largely um, an Anglo-Saxon country. It's changed since then. And there was not generally very much interest in the arts. That was the sort of background. Now, against that background, there, there were theatrical stirrings. There, there were amateur groups. There were um, groups of people in Toronto who were interested in the theatre, who were trying to do things. But it was generally on an amateur basis, with the exception of what went on at the Royal Alec. Um, they did have professional um, um, groups that would come in and uh, play um, um, some of the classics, but often more popular plays. And in the meantime, the, um, uh, the variety circuits that had uh, proliferated in southern Ontario in the earlier part of the century, those had passed away. Yes. Uh, and uh, if uh, memory serves, the Dominion Drama Festival was uh, still in operation, but um, uh, was uh, beginning to um, uh, lose some of its momentum. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, I remember correctly, there were uh, lots of stirrings on a local and grassroots basis for the establishment of a Canadian theatre, but not much wherewithal to do that. That's exactly right. Um, against that background, of course, there was radio. Uh, it, it's not drama in the sense that we're now talking about, but mm -hmm. there was a dramatic element in radio. They had uh, drama pieces. Um, on the radio, and that was a very big thing. Uh, television was, was just coming in mm -hmm. on, the, uh, on the horizon. Of course, when it did, it, it sort of took over uh, the, the uh, dramatic space from radio to a very large extent. So there, there was a, it was a period uh, of transition or beginning of transition into something else mm -hmm. around about this time. Now, later on, I want to go uh, a little bit into the degree to which television and radio performing kind of supported and uh, nourished uh, a performing arts community, particularly I think in Toronto where the, um, uh, where the CBC uh, had its, um, uh, well in a sense its national broadcasting headquarters down at mm. um, uh, 354 Jarvis Street, was it? Um, mm -hmm. But before we uh, but before we go that far, I'd like to um, uh, move the conversation in the direction of the uh, cultural community that your parents belonged to. Yeah, I, I find that an interesting question because mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, after the Second World War, there was an influx of English actors uh, to Toronto. Uh, they came, um, I suppose, to seek a better economic life, perhaps, but they came nevertheless. And uh, they naturally gravitated towards my father, who was from the old country, as you know. Uh, and um, they, they. And if I might uh, briefly interject, your father was, in fact, one of the, sort of the in the vanguard of that group, having arrived uh, together with your mother uh, in Toronto before the beginning of the war. That's right. That's right. Next, um, I was actually born in in uh, London. And, and I remember coming across uh, the, the um, uh, we were in a passenger liner. And uh, I think I was three at the time. This was 1939. And you remember that? I do. Oh and my uh, <laughs> I, I remember the balloons in uh, in London on high, on um, Primrose Hill. Uh, these were the the balloons to stop the German bombers. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I remember a and uh, seeing an air uh, um, an aircraft gun emplacement there. I asked my father what that was all about, and he told me. And then uh, then we got on to um, uh, the passenger liner and. Being so young, I couldn't tell the difference between the land and the ship because the ship was so big. I, I thought it was a big bridge that I was going across. But I ended. I remember asking my parents, "Are we on the ship yet?" Um, not knowing <laughs> that we just come off the the land. But when we got going, um, uh, there was a rumor around the um, the ship that I heard. Uh, 
that there was a German submarine chasing us. And I, I remember asking my parents, I was pretty worried about it, because uh, I knew that the submarines were not very good. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked them, and I was told that, oh, don't worry about that. This, this is such a fast ship, it, it uh, can outrun any German submarine. And that settled me down. <laughs> 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 so had um, had hostilities broken out at that point? Yes. Okay. Yes. So the so the the war. No, actually... no, I, it may not have been. Uh, well, uh, war had been declared. Okay. But you but you know was there's that phony war for a number of months where oh, okay. there was no no actual fighting going on, and I think we came out in that period. I'm All not right. sure because well, my understanding <clears throat> had been that your father and your mother came out uh, with the theatrical troupe, uh, yes. which was going to be touring the United States. Yes. And, uh, I think they'd been to South Africa before, and then they came here, okay. North America. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were effectively stranded by the commencement yeah. of hostilities. That's right. Okay. That's right. And uh, did they uh, did they find sort of other uh, a British expatriate community waiting for them uh, when they first arrived in Toronto? Uh, there were some, but uh, they seemed to be the first uh, because. The, uh, there was an abruption with the war. There, there, there weren't too many English people that could come out during the war. Mm -hmm. So um, there would be what the war lasted six years. So there would have been a six year period uh, before they came. Okay. So they would have come in 1945, 1946, and, and onwards. And, and they did form um, um, a nucleus, if you like, of, of a theatrical community. And um, uh, some of them were trained in the classics, mm -hmm. and they naturally gravitated towards my, uh, my parents' uh, orbit. Uh, but they went elsewhere, too, looking for jobs. They tried to get jobs in radio and, and early television and certainly drama. Uh, but um, uh, that influx uh, created some tensions within the theatrical community in Toronto. The Toronto was the only place that I could observe, but they were, they were significant tensions. Uh, One gets the <coughs> sense that there was, in effect, a kind of a, a community within a community. That is to say that there were some people within the theatrical community um, whose allegiances were perhaps um, more North American. I'm thinking mm. of people like John Draney, for example, whose, um, uh, whose training was largely in the method school um, and that uh, uh, he came by uh, on a trip to Hollywood. The genesis of the tension is that, uh, uh, first of all, these were people from another country. Mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, the, the, the Canada the was still a dominion at the time. It was sort of learning to flex its muscles, um, uh, moving towards a, a more independent uh, status in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, of course, the English spoke with a different accent. And um, there was an element within the Canadian um, community, theatrical community that wanted to, uh, to um, have a, a, a truly Canadian uh, um, theater, uh, indigenous theater, if you like, uh, where people spoke with the, you know, the local accents, where the, uh, they may, they may um, um, use other, or dramatists from other countries and, and play their plays, but it would, it, 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 uh, the accent was favored. Whereas the, the English accent, being much different, was considered by some, at least, to be rather haughty, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit on the arrogant side, uh, looking down on the local yokels. It was this attitude. There was a sort of an inverse snobbery that, mm -hmm. uh, that developed, uh, and I wonder an anti-discrimination, if you like, uh, uh -huh. um, towards the, uh, uh, no, uh, not anti-discrimination, um, uh, a discrimination against the the English accent mm -hmm. coming in. And that played out largely in the radio. Um, people like John Draney were, were preferred. I mean, he was a very good actor, by the way, mm -hmm. in his own right. Uh, but he had the sort of accent that people would favor. Whereas um, my father and, and mother and people like them uh, had this foreign accent that, that was not favored. Which I suppose they would have thought of as being the proper accent. The correct yeah, accent. that was what, how they grew up. Um, yes, and uh, there there was a um, um, a certain attitude of cultural clients. Uh, yeah. There was a cringe, in other words, mm -hmm. uh, among some many Canadians. There was a cultural cringe. Um, it was England that uh, was the the cultural um, arbiter, certainly in the theatre, and in many many other respects as well. 
and, uh, and the English felt that as well. So they came over there and they expected their standards uh, to be adhered to. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so that created a lot of this tension. And, and I think it played out too in some of the bitchiness and the carping comments that, mm -hmm. that um, appeared in the press from time to time and also appeared out of the mouths of, of some of the members of the theatrical community in Canada, mm -hmm. generally the, the more Canadian element ones. Well, I'm wondering too uh, if to a certain extent, and we really should uh, perhaps move on to talk uh, more concretely about the development uh, of the Earl Grey Players and the Earl Grey Shakespearean Festival, but before we do, um, I wonder if uh, it isn't fair to say that um, possibly many of the uh, tensions expressed themselves aesthetically in different views of what Canada was and what Canadian was supposed to mean. I mean, um, uh, fostering Canadian theater was one of your father's, uh, yeah. uh, was a very high priority with your it father. Was. Um, and so I think it's probably fair to say that uh, the uh, such disagreements as there were, were based on contrary definitions of what Canadian theater meant, what uh, kind of cultural project was involved in it, um, and what it was supposed to be. Yes, I, I, I think so. I mean, um, my father came from <clears throat> the, uh, the lengthy English tradition uh, with the old Vic and Sir John mm -hmm. Martin Harvey and all of that whole line. And um, uh, his, his view was, I suppose, very English. And when it came to Shakespeare, uh, he felt that the, uh, that the, um, uh, the most important aspect was the, the author himself, Shakespeare. He shouldn't be um, uh, stretched in interpretation. You shouldn't, as a director, try to impose your own view mm -hmm. on, on Shakespeare's language and, and try to twist it to demonstrate your own brilliance. Uh, he was very much against that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was an English attitude, I suppose, because they, they knew how to, to do Shakespeare in their own way, and they were comfortable in, in their own skin in, in that respect. And, and, and he brought that attitude to Canada. Now he brought it to a country that really had no Shakespeare tradition. It was taught in the schools, but uh, I don't think there was a single teacher who taught literature in, in Canada that had ever seen a Shakespeare play, maybe one or two, certainly not a professional one. Mm -hmm. uh, so there wasn't any standard really for doing Shakespeare, but there was an attitude. And, and the attitude came from this desire, which is quite proper, uh, on the part of people from a new country, um, feeling its oats, um, wanting to be its own creator, if you like, in Shakespeare, and uh, having a different accent, uh, a different orientation. Perhaps they wanted to be fresh, they wanted to be different in, in a way, to make a mark and not just be a tired old copy of, of um, something foreign. Mm -hmm. And uh, so their attitude towards the theater was different. Uh, perhaps uh, they had a desire to be experimental, whereas, whereas um, uh, my father didn't feel the need to be experimental mm -hmm. because, because he was flat to the boards just trying to interpret Shakespeare in a proper way.